All right, the next report um, that I'm going to ask Kristen to be sent, she'll be dealing with the financials uh, next year. Uh, this is the a PMA report. PMA is a financial advisor uh, that works for the district. We do an annual contract with PMA. They handle our five-year projections. Uh, normally when we, we've done these PMA projections uh, since I've been a superintendent here, uh, just to give the board a kind of worst case scenario, a conservative look at our financial future and projections. One of the concerns that came up in the past with the projections um, is they are, uh, they usually are formatted in a way that provides a worst case scenario. Um, so one thing that we did uh, with updating these projections, and Kristen will speak to it, is we, we tried to use as real numbers as possible um, in, in how we did our budget this year. And so the format that we took was um, instead of going financial projections from 19 to 24, we stuck, we stuck with the financial projections from last year of FY18 through 23, and we updated them with real numbers from FY18 and the real numbers of FY19, which is the current fiscal year we're in, and how we're tracking. Uh, and then we wanted to, um, pr to provide the projections for 20, 21, 22, and 23. Uh, so Kristen will give you an idea of the assumptions and the data that was inputted in this, and then how our financial projections and fund balance look over the next four years. All right, so I'd like to start on page 63 of board book. Um, so this is going over the projections that we gave roughly this time last year. Um, so I'd like to begin by looking at the first column going down, which is fiscal year 18. Um, as you can see, uh, a year ago we were uh, projecting to have a deficit in fiscal year 18 of roughly $341,000. Um, as some of you may remember, we ended with a surplus of roughly $636,000 due to receiving a lot of additional unexpected revenue. Um, so that was the year where we got a huge tax payment um, in July when it was supposed to be received in June. Um, so that resulted in a lot of extra revenue. Also, the state made five payments for special education because they hadn't made um, their four payments the year before. Um, and this was under general state aid, so we were actually getting more money in special ed payments. Um, under the new evidence-based funding, more of it shifted to there, so that's why that money is bigger than the 140 that you just heard from Scott. Um, and then this year, the state fully funded general state aid for the first time, resulting in additional money as well. So usually it's rare for one of those things to happen, and all three of them happened in the same year. So that resulted in the surplus. Had we not received that money, we would have had a slightly bigger deficit than what we were projecting. Um, there were two questions that were submitted on this page. The first question was about the $3 million in working cash. So at this time, the fiscal year budget, when that was created in the summer, we hadn't issued um, the bonds yet. And when we did the projection, we didn't issue those until the winter. And then when we did the projections, um, we still were operating off of the old budget because that wasn't amended um, until May. And so that's why these projections didn't reflect uh, the three million. The second question was about the beginning fund balance. Um, so that is the cash fund balance from the operating funds. So that's the Ed Fund, Operations and Maintenance, Transportation, IMRF, Social Security, and Working Cash. Marian, is there a chance you could make that like 130, even if the last row ain't on, is not on the screen, just so it's a little bigger for the audience? Even go a little bigger, 135, 140. If you get the picture, I see those brackets. <laughs> yeah. Stay positive, Mr. Gritchin. Stay positive. Okay, so that was from 2018. So now you, you want to go through your assumptions? Yes. Before so, you go okay. through, mm -hmm. make sure, because you're going to have two pages go to a very similar looking chart. This one says aggregate. The other one lists certain funds. So can you tell what's the difference between the aggregate and when we get, you can wait till we get to the other one, but why there's two charts in here. I think that's just a, I'm pretty sure. 
Yeah, so I will go on to the next, uh, the projections, assumptions. Marian, this is going to rest with you because it doesn't necessarily need to be zoomed in, but we can leave it that way. <laughs> um, so um, this is the page where uh, we explain all of the different assumptions that we use to build our projections for um, the updated projections on fiscal year 19, as well as uh, fiscal years 20 through 23. Not going to read all of them, uh, just highlight the significant ones that either have changed or have a big impact. Um, the, the first would be the consumer price index. Um, we do know the rate, uh, so it has been updated to 1.9%. It was originally at 2% for the levy year in 2019, and then we left it at 2% for the remaining years. Each 1% is approximately almost $200,000. And then uh, EAV new construction. So previously, um, in that oldest, that old projection that you saw, we had that at 200,000. Um, based off of our historical information, we've updated that to be um, 1.5 million. We only received 2% of this money, so that would roughly generate um, $30,000 additional in operating tax revenue. With regards to that, um, and with regards to the state of malls, should we be touching base with we met with them in October people who know and to, to see what the potential EA value of the mall is headed projecting Scott and I met with them in October with our mm -hmm. tax, tax appeals group and with the village of North Riverside and uh, what's the general assessment putting in putting in uh, video games is going to make save the mall no, but no. I don't think you'll see those changes um, till later in regards to the EAV, and I'm, I'm not sure if that EAV. Well, you got you got a five-year projection here, right? So, is it going to impact in these years? Uh, possibly towards 22 or 23, but we did not uh, adjust for that in 22 or 23. We need to confirm that with North Riverside. Yeah, I would suggest you do that, especially with the tenants you have, the tenants that are in those. Mortgages. But they did not have any data for us in October when we met with the title. Mm -hmm. Right, Scott? Did you have any update yeah, on that? Um, our attorneys are um, involved with it. Any type of information that I get with it is forwarded off to I the know, attorneys. I know, but they're, I mean, they're making a conscious decision not to replace them with uh, retail, retail, right? Going They're in a different a direction with yeah. it. And the question would be, what's that going to have an impact on EAB? And okay. so I would suggest, again, not knowing, yeah, so I would just suggest you kick tires on that. Thank okay. you. Um, under the expenditure. Yeah, hold, hold on a second, oh, sorry. Kristen. I, I, I'm wondering. We need a little more information on who is telling you that somebody like Sears isn't going to, you know, protest its taxes for four or five years. They're going to say that the value of retail space is going down and try to get their taxes reduced. I don't see why they would wait. Or I don't even know who owns it, if Carson still owns it or whoever. Well, that's why, I'm, that's why I raised the issue. That's that they need to go. Right, but in, 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 our, in our projections, we kept the property tax appeals still it's in there in the budget projections um, at the 300,000 the board budget uh, I, I know, but you in regards to asking them at like right now we're still dealing with their property tax bill from like three years ago so we won't know because of the timelines for filing whether or not I mean, they usually file every year in appeal so I don't know if there's a way really to put in here the property tax appeals well, I was just looking at the. You're looking I mean, at retail. I'm looking at the EAB, and if you, you know, right. is going up, you change it from, you know, what we historically now to 1.5. Is the EAB going to go the other way? Right. With the, the value of the malls. And, and, and there's I don't two. Know. There's two ways that you can appeal taxes. One, that you're talking about, they have to go through the whole process and go through a hearing. The other one is they appeal it like any taxpayer can up front, and they, I don't know why they wouldn't get adjustments if the value of retail space is going down without having to go through the there, that, that's a Board of Appeals. But, but Tim, that tends to, the appeals tend to take forever, right? I mean, we, we're still dealing with the Riverside Golf Course, right. still not getting theirs through yet. So, right. you know, I, 
I think I, I was I was just highlighting the EAV situation, which you know I don't know how long that takes, and I'm not an expert at this, and I know they you know so I'm just raising that next you know to kick tires on that and keep aware of that, especially with their the way they're 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 spacing out the retail okay. to different it ways seems now. Like, seems like we're going the wrong way. We're, we're we're making it higher, but maybe we shouldn't. Well, this this EV that we made higher though is just for the, the, the new, new construction. New construction. New construction. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. change the EAV for the right because we were too low and yeah. the number Correct. we had in there was significantly under than Correct. what the EAV came in at. Mm -hmm. So this is strictly for just new construction. All right. Mm -hmm. Ready for expenditures? So for the expenditure assumptions, um, when you see the projections, uh, it's important to note that we uh, have it set with staff salaries increasing at 3% per year. So that's administrators, teachers, and non-certified staff. Um, stipends increasing at 1% for fiscal year 20 and 21. Um, we've been working with our uh, insurance cooperative, EBC, and we have a rough estimate for our insurance costs uh, for fiscal year 20 increasing at 5%. Um, and then per the underwriter, we left it at 6.5% for the remaining years. And um, when you see the projections, uh, all of the staffing will reflect not only uh, the retirements, but if we're adding FTE or decreasing FTE for that particular year. Uh, there was a question on the working cash, but I'll be able to address that on the next page. Um, so if you go to the next page, um, page 65 in board book, um, this is the same chart. Um, from one year to the next, they just change the title at the top of the chart. But it is the uh, same chart with the same information, um, except for the fact that we've updated the projections. So if you look at uh, fiscal year um, 19, um, on the, a year ago, we were projecting to have roughly um, $118,000 deficit for fiscal year 19. As you can see, that's been updated to um, 214. Um, and that is due to some special education out of district tuition costs, um, which is why the uh, deficit has been adjusted. Um, well, when we originally budgeted, in the budget that was approved in September, the projection was 231 in our budget. Correct. So we're on tr based on the current information, we're on we're on track to come in under budget. Mm -hmm. And the reason we uh, one of the reasons we saved some cost is we had a teacher take a year long leave of absence for maternity leave, so we saved some money on uh, the sub cost there. Um, and so, um, if you look at fiscal year twenty, you will see that we um, are projecting a deficit of seven hundred and twenty nine thousand uh, dollars. So there's a question on uh, the $2.8 million. Um, so in order to reflect accurate fund balances, we transferred that to our capital projects um, so that it wasn't impacting the overall fund balance um, percentages at the bottom. The reason um, the title other financing, financing sources is a little misleading, but that is the state title that's used on um, the state budget form. And so what that category is used for is interest income, bonds, and transfers. And so we do have the money, we're just transferring it to capital projects to make sure that our fund balances are, represent an accurate picture of the available money that we have. Um, and so um, as you can see each year, um, given our current assumptions, we'll be running a deficit uh, fiscal year 2021. We're projected to run a $730,000 deficit fiscal year four, uh, 22, 479, and then fiscal year 23 at 219. If you see on the bottom, you can see the fund balances as the percent of expenditures. So every year we're getting closer to um, the board policy, which is 33%. Um, and so it also provides you an estimate of how many months we can operate um, with that percent of fund balance. Um, on the next page. Before we go to that page, um I'd like to just show the board an FY20 compared to 2018. So you see that there is an increase in the deficit that was projected in from the 2018 projections. So the one, one thing is, is that uh, based on our enrollment projections with the students coming in, we had to add two FTEs. So even though we have two FTEs retiring, uh, there's no cost savings because you have the to hiring two teachers to replace them plus an additional two for the increased enrollment. Uh, so that's the additional cost, which Christian explained in the bottom of her uh, chart. 
Sorry, Chris, and continue. That's okay. So yeah, but but the biggest increase, isn't it, in other? I mean, you originally had a seven point one million now it's seven point six. So what is the additional five hundred thousand on a seven million? Where are you looking at? I'm looking at the two charts. Well, you also have the uh, increase from out of district special education um, that also was not factored into the old projection that is now updated into the new projection. Okay, so that so we was have 120. Special education become a big enough number. I don't know. Maybe we should start uh, showing that as a separate line item. Um, so that that's Thank part you, of it as well. Gary. <laughs> I've always you, start by <laughs> you said how much was that? hundred Roughly one hundred and twenty, I think. <coughs> See what he's pointing out. If you look at your first chart, it's seven million thirty-one thousand mm. in fiscal so, twenty-nine for that number, and in this new chart, it's seven million five hundred ninety-seven. Mm -hmm. So it's so the other thing you have to keep in <coughs> mind is because um, fiscal year nineteen costs went up. Um, now all the projections are recalculated because if those costs went up, then the following year those costs are going to go up as well. I understand um, that, but that's where the big difference was. Why then you have to explain why did the fiscal 19 go up? So if you're explaining 150 right. out of 600,000, so what's the other 450? So in, in FY18, Scott number was only seven million and in FY19 it's updated with the real numbers and I think that's because the evidence-based funding collapsed that all into one that, would that be accurate or is it <coughs> uh, no it, this is on the expenditure side so uh, with it we have to look at that but that that number like you said was adjusted to all the different expenditures that were either under budgeted in 18 and then adjusted in 19 to capture all that we could go through and get exactly every single expenditure that would hit right that but I mean again 18 18 we weren't that far off you know take the fact that, that we got a lot of revenue in but the expenditures what we budgeted <coughs> to what we actually incurred you know we were we were pretty dead on with our expenses Right, we were with it. So we're always we're always dead on with our expenses. The game, the, the issue we always have is chasing when revenue. revenue is going to come into the fiscal year. So now all of a sudden, 18 hadn't changed much. Granted, we got additional <coughs> fresh lead coming in of 100 plus, but to go up <coughs> in the projections, almost 500,000. Um, you know, I'd be interested to understand what that's about, well, especially with the fact that it's on a seven million dollar budget. You're talking, you know, five hundred increase. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's and I know you have airmarks well, increase. You have in, you increase in transportation costs. Yeah, but you know, airmarks so like is CPI, all right? Two percent of yeah. a million. But uh, you know, you start adding those up, they add up quickly. We'll, we'll get an answer. Let's not guess. We'll just we'll look back we can back load it out. Two examples. So right, yeah, I understand, but. Am I wrong? Aramark is a million dollars a year, right? Uh, so if you take, one, one three, you take CPI on CPI a seven million, what is that? Two <coughs> percent is a hundred forty plus the hundred and fifty on special ed. You're only talking about two hundred to three hundred increase, not the five hundred increase. So you're double. You're running at four percent increases, not CPI increases. All right. Anyways. <coughs> Everybody's so, got a cough. Anybody need a bottle? We get back to this seven hundred and twenty-nine thousand sure. dollar deficit. Lose a number of times we've seen this chart, right? I think I think I saw it at, for twenty twenty <coughs> at, at a million three was the first time I saw this chart. Second time was minus four hundred ninety thousand, mm -hmm. and now it's minus seven hundred twenty-nine thousand. <laughs> Stop looking at the chart. Well, You're costing us money. As a guy, as the guy who voted against deficit spending, we're not going to get out of the deficit spending, right? right. We're not going to get five payments from the state Let's every just year. Assume right. that, right? Right. Are we going to get five payments, Gina? Never. <coughs> we got it last year. None. Why don't we get it? Because they were delinquent. They were delinquent the year before. Yes. And Pritzker, we can't turn around an aircraft carrier on a dime. So, like, don't think it's going to change just because he's there, right? Yeah. Well, I think it was, I mean, how long is that sustainable is the question, right? How long can we sustain that before we 
we pay out that eleven million, you know, fund well, the, balance or, or right. And I savings think, account. I think right? the next so board is going to have to face Thank you. issues whether to <laughs> look what happened, you know, to, to look at the staffing levels down the road, to look at the plan that you're going to have some debt rolling off. And maybe you turn that to saying, okay, taxpayers, you're going to have a decrease in your taxes, but now we need to move to the operational side. Would you be open for a referendum? You guys are going to have to face some choices. Can we reduce the slope a little bit by cutting costs? I mean, we don't want to do that eight years ago. Well, that's, we, yeah, that's what I'm saying. you got choices. You well, look to either to do that, increase right. revenue or you cut costs. Well, I, I'm going to have a hard time going down my block knocking on doors and asking for more tax dollars. Or you got the, you know, the, the idea is you have debt rolling off. Right. Yes, and add that, that ta it's a tax savings to the tax, but that, that's going to go away. What year is 23 or 24? 23 and 24. 20, and that's a, you know, you, you guys should assess what that impact is on a, you know, now at this time. Yeah, we had those charges right. from right. right. How much is fall. Right. How much is it going to decrease? Well, the, the only thing that's changed for the board from FY with the projections we did in 18 now in 19 is that one year those the deficits have slightly increased because of the addition of the two, the increase in enrollment. Um, but when we gave this projection to the board back last January, we were preparing you that deficit spending was going to become a reality here, even though over the last oh, seven out of the eight years of my tenure we've had, we were able to, you know, go uh, finish each year with a surplus. Um, or, so we were preparing the board to show you that how long we can go with the current fund balance until we're going to have to take some type of action. Right. Now, one of the things we had thrown out there last year, and obviously this is just throwing it out there, we're not, we're four or five years from this, but Gary's right, when that major debt comes off from the $55 million building referendum and the working cash bonds, uh, or 23 or 24, there's an opportunity to do a small tax increase and still save the taxpayers some money but we still need to be financially responsible um, because if there's any legislation changes or the state makes three payments instead of five payments or they don't fund evidence-based funding anymore or shift pensions, that the numbers in red can only, will only go up, right? I mean, we got a possibility under FY20 at 729. Let's say we get a, a perfect storm in that we get 100% of tax collection, so there's an additional 200, 250,000. Let's say we get all four payments, right? I mean, we're, even if all revenues come in at 100%, we'll still have a deficit somewhere in, in the 300 to 400,000 range. More than that. Mm, roughly 420. Roughly 420. Okay, but that's let's. What we but that's it. If a perfect storm. Be a, uh, and enrollment's still going up. We're not projecting that to come down. <coughs> not for a couple of years. Three. If if it if it trusts those projections to come down. Well let's make sure that we're clear on something here. We have a high degree of confidence that we didn't overestimate our expenditures or our revenues this time. All right, that's why we, we went through We that. can't sit here hoping we're gonna get more than ninety nine percent because we did ninety nine percent because that was pretty exactly close to what we collected over the several years, right? Five-year trend. So we don't want to paint some rosy picture that if the moon aligns with the sun or something, we're going to get down to 400,000 deficit because that's extremely unlikely. This is what we think is going to happen on here, right? Correct. So the question for the board is, you got two big years of deficit and then it goes down some. You know, how much is the board willing to stomach on a deficit spending for the next two years, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what can we do to try to manage that number so we don't hit $729,000? Is that correct? Correct. Am I saying mm -hmm. something that's wrong? No. Nope. I mean, I don't want to paint it. I think we spent a lot of effort in the last two years working hard to get the numbers that we think are accurate, especially after we had some big swings. Mm -hmm. Is it possible we'll get a fifth payment? It's possible, but it's extremely unlikely. Mm -hmm. 
Is it possible at 100%? It's possible, but it's extremely unlikely. It would be out of the ordinary for anything we've seen in the years we've been looking at. So this is what we really think is going to happen if we spend the money the way that we're budgeting or we've projected it for for the next fiscal year, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing to consider is we just talked about best case scenario. You could also do the reverse and talk about worst case scenario, right? right? We don't get a special ed payment. We are tax collection drops to ninety eight point five percent or ninety eight percent. And then you're state. right. We need to hire and then a you're couple more special ed to support people correct. or special ed teachers next year, right? Correct. That deficit can go up. Could, could go up even higher. So right. this, this deficit is where we think it could be takes into account then our three percent increase that we're projecting with the new contract. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. We haven't negotiated any increase with the new contract yet. But that's so uh, this is just a projection. An assumption that right. three percent is pretty much the norm. As no, that we're not assumption. saying it's the norm. It, it's the we're norm that we've that's used we in, in, as, in assumptions when making assumptions. I'm talking about not the norm of a contract, but when you make assumptions, that's usually the norm, 3%. That's what we have been using in, in this year and years past, yes. So if we reduce that percent at all, we could plausibly reduce that a little bit. Yes, that what, could be one way. Any, anytime you reduce an expenditure, yes, you would reduce. So, so the for deficit. instance, two point one is the projected CPI for next year, right? We already know the number. Uh, it's one point nine. One point nine, excuse me. But we still you get half of two point one. Two point one is this year, yeah. Okay, two one this year, one nine next year, mm -hmm. but we projected three percent in the salary. Correct. Okay. So, I mean, anytime we increase over CPI, it's never good for us. Anytime you increase over CPI, it's just not. You, you know, you're done a deficit spend. It's right. just the reality. We have more, you know, our salaries will increase at a higher rate. Um, you know, I think Tim, Tim brings up a good thing in my comments earlier were similar to like Tim's comments of it could be worse and then we don't get any of those payments and that number can go up. The, ra the reason behind my comments is perfect storm or everything aligned, even, there still will be a deficit. So what I'm basically, I just want to make sure the board understands is when we're doing this projection for you, like I don't see there unless, which which is would go against what we've been doing here. And we and we're okay, we we're okay fund balance wise but we need to start looking at this because defi deficits are inevitable at this point. Can, do, can we ever see this model just hold into CPI for increase? I mean, what would it look like if we held to CPI? Well, it, you can't, you can't you project, can project five years it out way, CPI. Right. It's what we, a big part of it is, you know, what the, where we can negotiate with the RBEA as far as salaries go. I mean, so you're saying you want to say what the deficit would be at CPI? Yeah, so if we, yeah. 500000 yeah, that what, might be a palatable number to you. Yeah, what would it look like if, thousand. you know, we go in our negotiations and say we just, we have to stay pair. We have to achieve some kind of parity with our CPI increase. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Tim, but I think... Uh, Numbers roughly hundred thousand dollars for every one percent increase in the salary we offer them. Is that right? For yeah. teachers. Yeah. So if we go CPI, it's basically we save a hundred thousand dollars. Just for the teachers. Just for the teachers. Mm -hmm. I think. I think. Uh, so, I, I, but I, the, I, the issue is not just salary, right? The, We've been bringing on staff because of the enrollment size. So, you know, you're adding right. you're with adding fully, with fully loaded benefits, you know, somewhere in the range of, let's just say for purposes of argument here, $75,000 to $80,000. Because we want to keep that ratio of student to teachers. Right, so that's, a, that's sport, another 6.6 right. .6 of a percent, right. right? Roughly, if, you, if you're using... I think it's actually a little higher. You know, 100, uh, my number is probably closer to 180 is one percent. But I don't know. So we might have to start looking at maybe a class size of 22. Well, I, well, I mean that's a decision. I think this is. I think this is a reckoning to recognize that you know, you know, back in 
eight years ago when we came on the board, it was this idea of having a referendum. We proved out that we can manage through this, but I think you're getting to a point now where between enrollment and the fact that we've been living off of very small CPI increases and things like that, I this time it's coming to, to fruition and it's going to be the next board is going to, to look it over scrub it, look it over, and come up with a decision how they want to run, go forward with it. I think I think there's something, you know, I've been here now eight years, so education moves in cycles, it's cyclical, right? So in 2011, the board, and before I arrived, there was a failed referendum. We had a $2 million deficit. We took all the necessary steps with staffing, pay to participate, class sizes, um, right. Alternative revenue right. was, sources, yeah. Alternative revenue. Right. So we did all those things, and now we've kind of used up that extra revenue. We've used Scrubbed every we've got, contract. Right. So we've gotten some things. We've worked with the RBA for two, two three-year agreements. So it, it's just to bring, rec like I think Gary's saying, it's, it, at some point we may have to revisit. Is the 25 to 1 in core classes manageable, or do we have to go back to 30 to 1? Well, you know, those are different things. If the board says it's, you know, listen, we don't want to do that, then we have to look at... Or do you go out to the public and right. say, look, if you're going to roll off a debt, it's costing you X per $100,000 of home value. Can we switch that off into costing you Y? And it's going to go into the operation fund, yeah. but that would mean it'd be a, t a referendum because that debt's automatically going to roll off and you would have to actually go out there and ask for a referendum. Yeah. But you know, eight years when we when we did it, we took away every program practically. The prop we didn't have as much tax debt from our other feeder schools, and I want to say the median income in the communities, I want to say, has dropped in the past eight years in some of our communities. Yeah, but if you remember the time the tax referendum, that was the you know that was the great. Uh, recession or whatever, right? So a lot of people were losing homes and Right, but so, now I, mean, I think the median income is lower now than it was eight years ago. I, I don't know. I don't have stats to say that whether or not. So I don't think so. But I don't have stats. But anyways, we can't, we can't control that anymore. Yeah. No, but what I'm saying but is think, there's less likelihood okay. of passing a referendum I think, now. I, th I, th I, th I think the point is we're raising we're showing a fiber projection. It's something for yeah. as you get the new board on to have a discussion, and uh, it's not immediate. I mean, we the fund balance has been built up, so it's well, not an immediate crisis. It's just something to start thinking about and planning. So, but I think that understanding is we have to be careful and take a hard look at all of our expenditures and costs to try to keep the deficit as low as as re right. reasonable. Right? Is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, people are that's, saying. That's, okay. That's all. Well, all right. and, I, and I'd like to add, we've done a pretty good job. You guys have done a, a good job in the last four years, and we've done a good job. In last, I mean, we were counting yeah, yeah. telephones last year. I mean, that's how we were saving money, right? I mean, literally, we did that. Scott did it. Right. Okay. You know, I'd like to see uh, the uh, enrollment projection. The last thing I have was, like, Went up to 2017. I mean, are those available? Oh, no, you have no, an you got an enrollment projection in uh, November, November all the way up to 23. Yeah, it's in November from November. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so, so actually, we start declining. Yes. That's why you see the deficits start to take a dip in 22 uh, and in 23 because yeah, we nice. take a teacher or two off the books based on enrollment numbers are scheduled to decline. Now, if new families move in, or there's transfers. I mean, that yeah. could always change, but... I kind of like that one chart where you give us all, all the feeder schools. Yes, that's the one we give out. No, we have from kinder, we track from kindergarten through eighth grade for the feeder yeah, schools. Yeah, and we gave that to you in November, John. It should be on the this website. One, it's on the website. Mine's a little dated, but, I, but I've got it. Chris, did you want to skip to uh, expenditure analysis? Is there anything specific you want to touch on? Was it that? really anything specific on either one of them? Um, it just breaks it down in a different way of looking at it. Um, and if we could, when you get a chance, you and Scott look back at FY18's presentation, I'm wondering on the expenditure analysis if that might figure out where it went from 7 to 7.5. Because on your expenditure analysis on this page, it breaks down some of those other. So I'm wondering that may give us a better answer. And we could send it out on a Friday update to the board. Okay? 
And some of these expenditures are kind of out of our control, right? I mean, right. But I'm thinking special it ed has been a, a, a big driver, right? I'm, that, I'm yeah. thinking there was that four hundred thousand we took out of working cash or uh, uh, capital projects last year. Yeah. With the roof and with Scott the, has some of that information. I, I can give you the difference between what was projected in 18, what 18's budget was to 19's difference. For example, out of district tuition actually from budget to budget was four hundred thousand dollars difference. The ADZ purchase service from budget to budget is one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars difference. Well, there's five thirty-five right there. And then if you add in Airmarks at twenty-five thousand with the CPI, then you have we increased IMRF fund. They reflect what our non-certified staff is. That was twenty-six thousand, and then transportation was twenty-five thousand dollar increase just for the special ed transportation. So if you add all those up, that gives you roughly your six hundred thousand. Okay. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Appreciate that. Good job. Is that it on the, the financial projections? You answered all the questions that mm -hmm. were submitted. Yes, that's it. Okay. New business. New business. Student handbook, first read. So this is a first read of the student handbook. Oh, wait, uh, we have to do uh, what visitor's do we have comments. To do? Oh, that's right. Let's move on. Is there I'm sorry. Yeah, we jump. Visitor's comment. Um, anyone wish to speak? Good. Then I don't have to read the, uh, <laughs> the rules. So let's go. Discussion. Discussion information items to present. Anyone uh, to my left? Anyone to my right? No? All right. Old, let's go to old business, life safety items, capital improvements. We're still in the right order, so you're trying to jump me around. Sorry about that. You just didn't want to talk about it, did you? There is no update. <laughs> I shared when Tim asked the question on facilities.